Good afternoon, welcome to another A Push video with Mr. Pate. Today we're going to be talking about review of the civil rights movements and all eras of civil rights from Reconstruction on. With Reconstruction, there were several problems that emerged. You can really put them into several categories pretty easily. Problems resulting from Reconstruction's failures included segregation and the entire Jim Crow system, making African Americans second class citizens, economic opportunities, or really the lack thereof, where uh, African Americans in the South largely were sharecroppers or uh, dealing, well, and dealing with the crop lien system. They also in the North were heavily discriminated against. Voting suppression through grandfather clause, literacy tests, poll taxes, KKK intimidation, that uh, basically African Americans in the South were not able to vote once Reconstruction ended. And education, the fact that they're getting a substandard second education. Uh, secondary quality. So the first period we're going to talk about is 1895 to 1940. Hopefully you know 1895 It's kind of a seminal year because it's the beginning of civil rights for African Americans. Booker T. Washington is going to offer Atlanta Compromise and he is going to essentially target economic equality and improvement as a key area. He is going to say he can live with separate but equal at the time if it's truly equal. Now of course we know it never is but he says I, if it's at least truly equal, the schools will allow us to uh, improve ourselves. And he said, I want to focus on vocational technical training so that African Americans can get better, better paying jobs. So that's his focus, and that's what the Tuskegee Institute does. W.B. Du Bois, um, a decade later in the early 1900s, is going to reject this and say total equality now. The segregation system is wrong, should not be allowed. I'm never going to acknowledge it's okay. Uh, NAACP is something he's going to be a part of, and their focus is going to be on legal challenges. That's an important thing for you to remember, legal challenges in the courts, trying to say segregation is unacceptable. Okay, really you have, you know, only small things going on over the next couple of decades for African Americans. Certainly uh, there are some efforts on their behalf by the Roosevelt administration, but really the next significant thing we want to look at is A. Philip Randolph. And during World War II, he threatens a march on Washington. It's not actually going to occur, but he threatens a march on Washington saying, I would like, uh, I, I, I want for African Americans uh, desegregated armed forces, desegregated government jobs, desegregated defense industries. And he's not going to get all of those, but FDR does not want uh, a disruption to wartime unity, and he says, I will give you... Uh, war, I'll give you the war industries being desegregated. And Randolph accepts that. There is no strike or march on Washington or anything. It's essentially that just settles things out. He's called the father of the civil rights movement. Now, one other thing that's significant that I didn't put up here, I'm not really sure I would fit it in in terms of civil rights, but I guess dealing with segregation also, of course, is Jackie Robinson, 1947, uh, a couple years later, integrating the most popular professional sports at the time. Okay, going on to the civil rights movement in the 1950s. Things slowly are inching along. The NAACP has been pushing court cases, and they finally get the big one, and that is Brown versus Board of Education, and that is going to be dealing with segregation. Now, obviously, that has some help for you know economic improvement as well. I didn't I didn't put it down here with education, uh, but it's mainly striking at the heart of segregation, saying it's not okay. Thurgood Marshall is going to be the name to know. He's going to be the prosecuting attorney, and in the 1960s becomes the first African American uh, Supreme Court justice. Uh, going along with that, a couple of years later, in 1957, you have the Little Rock uh, school integration situation, and the Little Rock Nine are going to go and be integrating the school. Now, I put these all up here under segregation as a concept. You could really talk about it as education as well, in both of those cases, because they're dealing with schools, and when schools have to be improved by law to be better. Of course, that's to the benefit, uh, you know, with integrated schools, et cetera, that's to the benefit of African Americans. So that is an improvement, even though it's not listed down here. Montgomery bus boycott is also going to be a huge victory uh, in that, you know, basically they are going to desegregate the bus lines because African Americans were the main ones using them and they used this boycott strategy very effectively there. This is also the rise of Martin Luther King Jr., SCLC, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and Rosa Parks. And this is kind of Rosa Parks' one moment, and of course Martin Luther King will have many more. In the early 1960s, you have the sit-in start at Greensboro, North Carolina, 
and spread and you have all kinds of nonviolent protests uh, exploding across the country and targeting, you know, we're willing to fill up the jails and targeting segregation by um, all of these nonviolent protest forms. Birmingham, a, a march that's caught on national television is going to show uh, the United States citizens, show the world, attack dogs, police clubs, fire hoses turned on African American children. And this is going to have such a big impact. John F. Kennedy is going to have to jump into the conflict at this point, and that's going to be with the March on Washington. Uh, now, it's not John F. Kennedy, but it's, it's something Mar Martin Luther King is doing, is John F. Kennedy has called for a civil rights bill to, be, to come forward, and he says race has no place in America. It would be providing segregation to end. It would close off segregation. Uh, the March on Washington is organized by Martin Luther King and SCLC to put pressure on Congress to gain, you know, galvanize public opinion in favor of this. And that's in fact what it's going to do. After Kennedy unfortunately is assassinated, Civil Rights Act of 1964, that same bill will be pushed through by Lyndon Johnson. And this basically tears down segregation over the years. Uh, other things that are going on, I kind of skipped over voting because it's before and after. Um, you're going to have a CORE, Congress on Racial Equality, and other groups are going to do the Freedom Rides, and then, uh, of course, the Freedom Rides, and then Freedom Summer is going to occur also. And they are uh, voter registration drives, inspections to make sure that African Americans are allowed to vote, which, of course, they are not. And so this is all under that idea of targeting voter suppression. Uh, the FBI is going to get sent in to deal with KKK intimidation that's going on. And eventually, Lyndon Johnson will get past the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And this, of course, will strike down, um, you know, literacy tests, poll taxes, any, anything like that that would uh, be suppressing African American votes. And then for education, we already talked about Brown versus Board of Ed and Little Rock, but there's also the college campuses. And college campuses, it's a big factor. You have um, campuses of Old Miss and University of Alabama. The governor is literally blocking the University of Alabama's entrance, um, and so the, the state is using its forces to try and stop integration of uh, public universities by African Americans, and eventually the federal government will intervene and basically through court orders and government pressure and threats of military force, uh, these schools become integrated and higher education is improved. Uh, now, the last thing we've got is economic opportunity, and you have the Civil Rights Act of 1968, which is um, non-discrimination in housing for renting and buying. And you have affirmative action, which of course says that for higher education, again, that could also come down here as a secondary thing in education. Uh, you have uh, affirmative action says you can't have discrimination when looking at college applications based on race, later expanded to gender as well. And you can't have it for major employers anywhere. It uh, sets up kind of a de facto quota system in these places. You know, I did not put up here um, more radical movements like Black Power, and Malcolm X, that sometimes they wanted some of these same things, but they also were saying police brutality and um, lack of economic progress for African Americans were things that they were raging against and very uh, much in favor of seeing happen, some improvements in those areas. But this kind of gives you um, a way that you could attack an essay on this topic. Uh, a way to think about the whole progression of the civil rights movement. That's all the time we have for today.